hosting another couple. The people are doubled up, tripled up in apartments across the city, and this is a part of the invisible homelessness situation mm -hmm. that we see in Nashville. And it ter causes terrible problems that we see throughout the city. The mayor uh, interested in trying to do something about youth violence. Well, this is a huge part of the youth mm -hmm. violence problem as well. If people don't have stable places to live, if they're in camps and they're threatened with eviction, wherever they're threatened with eviction, they ultimately, it, it increases the tensions and the problems within mm -hmm. the area. Um, there have been a series of apartments that have been bought out mm -hmm. and uh, turned into higher priced housing. Mm -hmm. Edmondson Manor, for example, um, and uh, the James Robertson, which still s s is empty. Mm -hmm. And all of these people have been forced into other places, often either outside of the county or into mm -hmm. literal homelessness. Now, Mr. Rodriguez, you talk about the uh, statistical information in reference to the uh, homeless population. Give us some information in reference to that and yeah. uh, how what we're doing here in Nashville differs from uh, some of the issues, some of the other areas that you might be familiar with. Yeah, so my, my focus in my research is, um, is national, although uh, in the last year or so I've tried to focus more, more on Nashville specifically. Um, what's, what's really striking to me is um, is, is how uh, normalized mass homelessness has, has become. Mm -hmm. So in um, leading up to the 1980s, um, homelessness was more or less cyclical. It would be tied a lot more to the labor market. When there was a lot of unemployment, there would be a lot more homelessness. When unemployment would go down, homelessness would tend, tend to go down too. Mm -hmm. But starting in the late 70s, early 1980s, uh, we started to see this sustained uh, mass homelessness and the and the bottom floor estimates today are about uh, half a million uh, nationally, although it's, um, uh, that's not counting a lot of people, so it's probably over, over a million at least. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, so, so one question I have is why, um, why, why is it we've, we've gotten used to it? We've, 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 we've adjusted to homelessness having a place in our society um, at this level, and, and so we need to do something to um, uh, introduce it. We need to uh, realize a different ethic, really. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, so one, um, there there are several approaches being adopted by Nashville mm -hmm. to to reduce homelessness. I mean, um, there's a more more of the preventive side, uh, build, building affordable housing. Mm -hmm. there, um, that's uh, what what a lot of advocates here in Nashville are wanting to do. Um, once people um, uh, once people become homeless, one mm -hmm. debate nationally has been how do you, um, what, what's the best way to get people um, back into back housing? Back into housing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a real problem, you think, that, and, and, and you find that Nashville is no different in a real sense from a large number of urban areas, not only large mm -hmm. areas, but I would imagine that if you go in Smyrna, you'll find the same kind of issue. Perhaps it might, they might be more intense in Smyrna than they might be in Nashville simply because Smyrna, Smyrna probably does not have the resources, mm -hmm. really does not have the resources to uh, deal with that as, as part of the population. And so what we, we, we want to do, and we're coming uh, to the end of this second segment, what we want to do, we want to start with uh, Howard here mm -hmm. and to start talk about this issue of gentrification because I think that that is a real issue and uh, I think we see all of these great buildings going up in Nashville, uh, we're becoming uh, urban but in a real sense, we're, a large number of folks are suffering because of it. And so what we're going to do, we're going to take this first commercial break, and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. Three minutes, three minutes everything that you know that might be helpful in terms of what we're trying to accomplish here today, dealing with this issue of gentrification, you see. Okay. This is what we want, that, that's how we want to do it. And so okay. all of you have the information in reference to, the only thing I know is that everywhere I go, I see, I think that I'm in New England or somewhere, uh -huh. and I see all of these houses and some of the places that were dilapidated and whatever, you go by now and they've been rebuilt and they've got a nice front to it and there are different structures and something's going on there, but the same people that once lived there are no longer there uh -huh. and what happened. And so that's what, you know, okay. that, that's what I see. 
that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. That's why I was attracted to this yeah. as, as an issue here. Oh. Because, and so uh, you take about three minutes, mm -hmm. you take about three minutes, mm -hmm. you take about three minutes and, and, and deal with anything that you'd like to deal with, mm -hmm. with this issue of what? Gentrification. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay? You know, this, is, this is the last segment of three times five is 15 segments mm. we had today. Started at 10.30 this 